Hey guys, Jordan Downey here, doing a little commentary for my short film, Crawl Lake. Crawl Lake was a student film of mine. We actually had to, as uh, film students, make two student films, the first of which you would make when you were a junior, and the second, your thesis film, when you were a senior. The first film had a few rules and limitations, and that was that it had to be shot on 16 millimeter film, and it had to be all MOS, which means no sound recorded on set. So the point of that was to basically get you to tell a visual story without using dialogue and to keep it simple. They wanted to ease you into the filmmaking process, let's just say. So this was my junior level film, Crawl Lake. Kevin Stewart and I wrote this together. He shot it. It was a big deal for him at the time as a DP because it was night exteriors. We had a big crew. A lot of gear, big lights, and we were shooting out in the woods on location. That's a lot of tough stuff to be up against for anybody, let alone a first-time DP. And for myself as a director, I was terrified on this. I mean, I very clearly remember being uh, scared to death making this film with, you know, turning around and seeing a big crew. It's a big difference between going from making movies in your backyard with friends or family, and there's two people around, to having 20, 30 people around looking to you to make a decision. I was terrified at the time, and while it's a student film and I spent a lot of money on it, it's hard to say that that was a waste because of that experience that I just described of making decisions on the fly, being a leader, all of those lessons that you learn, you really can't learn unless you're on uh, set with that size crew and that stuff costs money it takes time and there's a lot of pressure involved this year that's Carl Crudup uh, the other two actors I'll talk about them here in a sec this was uh, Kevin and I wanted to make a lake monster movie I, I really don't remember where the idea came from but it was just something that we wanted to make this kind of small town lake monster movie and we'd written a feature script and ended up deciding to shoot some of the pages from that feature into a short. That there is a young Bella Thorne who has now gone on to have a successful career as an actress. She's doing really great, and I was lucky enough to get her in this before she really blew up and her career really took off. So that's her as a, a kid here. The concept, the premise is that she is the daughter of the man that we saw uh, earlier in the film, and they're out on a camping trip, and she gets separated from her dad in the woods. Meanwhile, there's some... Oh, there's those guys, lake-dwelling monsters called the Lurkers, and that's what we called them in the script. Those guys came out of the water and basically start to run rampage, and she has found herself in the uh, you know care of this shack-dwelling hermit that kind of lives out here on the water. That's Lauren Haynes there. Now Lauren, we cast, he actually was living in New Mexico at the time, and we, I cast him online. We, I found him on a now casting website and had no idea that that's where he lived, but I just, I really liked his reel, I liked his look, and reached out to him, and so we ended up flying him out, which is kind of crazy for a student film. That's not something you would normally do. The other two actors were local and lived in Los Angeles. We shot the whole film in LA, at a uh, film ranch, which is basically just acres and acres of land that has all of these different film sets. So there's kind of like a Spanish style house. There's this house, which is the shack and lake set. This was used in The Devil's Rejects, and you've seen it in a bunch of other movies. Um, unfortunately, there was a fire, forest fire there um, about a year ago, and I don't know if this actually burnt down, but I think that entire ranch, it was called Sable Ranch, a lot of the stuff got burned down, unfortunately. But Rob Zombie used a lot of this location in Devil's Rejects, and you've seen it in a bunch of other stuff and commercials. So we went out there and shot this in January of 2007. It was freezing cold. It was raining. We had all kinds of big lights, like I said. We had a steady cam. That was crazy. Carl has been injured by the monster that he encountered in the window, <clears throat> and Lauren here comes up to sort of investigate and he sees that jewelry back there which is a necklace from his daughter Julia and that clues him in that she's been here and he thinks that this guy maybe had something to do with it and then the lurker pops out of the darkness and you get into a fight. The lurker here was actually basically a shirtless friend. 
and he was just covered in blood. And the mask, I sculpted and made myself. I bought a monster making, or a monster mask making kit online, I think from Monster Makers is the name of the company, which comes with a big block of clay and a, a head kind of armature that you can sculpt around. And it comes with everything you need to make the mold and the mask latex and everything. So I taught myself how to do it over Christmas break and I just made this monster mask because I couldn't afford to go out and get a special effects guy. Here we have uh, Lauren's POV, his perspective in the water splashing around. Now, that's because the water was so cold, <clears throat> excuse me, that we didn't want to actually go out with the actors into the water. So we had our cameraman in an underwater, the camera had an underwater housing and he was wearing a wetsuit. So that was the only way we could go out there and safely do this in January without somebody getting really cold. We had that shot right there was a second unit shot, which basically is like, you know, on a bigger movie, you've got two crews. The first unit is with the main actors. The second unit is shooting B-roll or inserts or action pieces, special effects kind of shots. We had so many shots and, and luckily I was I, I was really, really lucky to have the best crew and all of the best students came out to work on this. And uh, so I was able to actually have a second unit and two cameras there shooting, which is a luxury that most movies don't get, let alone a student film. So here we have him bashing the lurker over the head of the rubber paint can, grabbing the shotgun and, and rumming, running out into the night. Now the concept, like I said, we wanted to do a lake monster movie, but the idea would be that his daughter was eaten and killed by these monsters early on in the, in the script. And essentially this dad goes on a, a rampage over the course of the rest of the night, killing as many of these things as he can and uh, taking as many of them down, even if it means his own death. Um, so a lot of these fights, you know, we, we had hardly any special effects. That's a rubber glove there. and. Like I said, the mask, he's, Lauren there's holding a rubber shotgun. So we had to shoot a lot of this stuff, shoot around it. That's why you see a lot of these over the shoulder and quick cuts. It's not how I would normally like to shoot a fight scene, let alone any kind of a monster attack. But uh, it's just kind of what we were up against. I, I can't remember. I think The Descent had come out at the time, and I loved that movie. And I think I was probably inspired by how fast the edits were in some of those monster attacks, and we kind of utilized that style. This is my favorite part of the whole short, is the next morning now when he wakes up. I always love movies that end on dawn. There's something kind of interesting about that arc that a character... I also like stuff that takes place in a very linear fashion, especially survive the night kind of horror. So I love the moments then when that next morning comes like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre or millions of other movies have done it. But there's something about that, like I've made it through the night and now the next morning is here and uh, what's going to happen. So there's one last lurker, potentially more out there. And our guy is uh, banged up and pretty, you know, bloodied. He's been beat to shit through the night, but he does get his final blow in there and he does get to complete his act of revenge here. That was a digital button flash there. We could not afford any special effects, so there was no cutting to a, a head wound or any sort of gunshot there. So there was this little, we cut in that little ripple there. I thought it'd be interesting if you weren't quite sure if that's another monster or if maybe that's his daughter is somehow alive, but this is the moment, this was really the thing that inspired us to want to make this, is just this little moment of like, this guy has been through hell and he's killed a bunch of these monsters, his daughter has died and he has taken on a quest of revenge, so a theme that I've always been interested in. But at the end of the day, even though he has accomplished his mission, his daughter is still gone and he's left with that one last visual of the shoe there on the shore and he drops to his knees and that's it. I kind of, you know, explored this same theme in Techno Western, a short that I made, you know, much more recently about uh, about revenge and violence. And there's just something about a more realistic portrayal to that. And that when you get to the finish line after some sort of uh, adventure or, like I said, a mission for revenge, that when you get there, 
it's not as heroic it's not as like rewarding as maybe you would think that there's something actually really painful about getting to that point that was the theme and the kind of moral backbone of the whole short film even though it's a very small little thing that is only in there for the very end I think it's really important to try and find the heart of every movie that you make even if it is a student film and we were on to that even back then, and I highly recommend that that is something that you guys explore in your projects. It certainly is something that's very important to me. So talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening.